So that's the introduction I wanted to tell you about these diseases. What happens to the people who have these diseases? Well, they have changes in their thinking, they have changes in their movement, in their motor performance, and they have changes in their behavior. And each disease has a different combination of changes in thinking, movement, and behavior. By behavior, I mean people acting crazy, like uh, uh, you know, think someone's stealing from them, or think their children are trying to poison them, or run around in the street without any clothes, things like that. Uh, I know that happens even here, though maybe a little bit less than America. <laughs> so we have rules to try to figure out what people have, but they're not very good. This is what, is, in our doctor role, what we can do, we say if a person has a lot of memory problems and some other problems, and they can't feed themselves or do their checkbook or things like that, then they have Alzheimer's disease if they don't have something else. And it's like a rule book. We have similar rules for Lewy body disease. But here the rules are a little bit different. The rules are that if a person has sees hallucinations, sees things that aren't there, like dead grandparents, and, or uh, has fluctuations, some days pretty good, some days pretty bad, and they have Parkinsonism, they walk very slowly and are stiff. In those cases, more likely to have Lewy body disease. But there's still a lot of mixture. The mixture is really quite pronounced. Some people have pure Parkinson's without any dementia at all. Some people have pure Alzheimer's disease without any Parkinson's at all. And a lot of people have a mixture. And that mixture we call Lewy body disease. And I'll be talking a little bit about that later on. But we're not very good at telling this. And some people with Lewy body disease who seem to have Lewy body disease really have mostly these pathologies and uh, some of them have a mixture of pathologies. I told you the third uh, reasonably frequent type of dementia is something called frontotemporal dementia. Very fascinating sets of disorders. Just like Alzheimer mostly is memory, and Lewy body, Parkinsonism is a big feature. For frontotemporal dementia, behavior is a big feature. So very often, problems with alcoholism, or controlling desires, eating too much, controlling other desires, inappropriate in public. So those are often problems in front of temporal dementia. Some people just have a form where it's language and they cannot really speak well, even though they remember pretty well. So how can we figure this out at all? Well, the first clue is Pathology is people who have given their brains after they died, which allowed us to figure out that there are different molecules involved in these different uh, disorders. So in Alzheimer's disease, this is the brain on the left of somebody with Alzheimer's disease, there is shrinkage of the brain with loss of nerve cell connection, synapses, loss of nerve cells, and then these abnormal things we call plaques and tangles. And those are abnormal proteins. These are plaques. This is low magnification. This is higher magnification, either by a silver stain, just like some of you maybe do for gels uh, here and here, or a fluorescent stain, like many of you probably use for other things. So we can stain the brain section and see the plaques. And as it turns out, it's deposits of beta amyloid protein. And they're all over the brain, but they have their own distribution. And this has been very well worked out. On average, some places have more than other places. And that's very interesting. And we don't know exactly why. There's also tangles I mentioned. Plaques are amyloid that's outside of the cell. Tangles are neurofibrillary uh, tangles, little filaments that are all uh, intermediate-sized filaments that are all together. And uh, they are composed of a hyperphosphorylated form of tau. You can see it in the electron micrograph here, not the phosphorylation, but the filaments. And uh, they also have their own distribution in the brain, particularly in the memory centers. This is silver state at, higher, at high magnification light microscope. 
So these are the sorts of things that happen in Alzheimer's disease. What about in Lewy body disease? Well, sometimes we have those things, but we also have these things called Lewy bodies, named after a German neuropathologist over 100 years ago. And uh, this is the brain stem, the bottom part of the brain, of, a per of two people, one normal and one with Lewy body disease. And you can see that this black stuff here is really not very evident, not so much showing there in the Lewy body midbrain or brain stem. And that's because all these cells that are pigmented, called the pars compacta of the substantia nigra, all those cells are degenerating. These are some of those cells. You can see the pigment, and this is the Lewy body, which is a marker of degeneration. And only about 10 or 15 years ago uh, was it realized what this even, what protein was in here. Amyloid protein we've known for over 20 years, but still not that long. Uh, Lewy body uh, protein is alpha-synuclein, a well-known synaptic protein. And, uh, but it gets all glommed up and aggregates in the, uh, in the Lewy body. And somehow that's associated with the degeneration. Just to show you what frontal temporal dementia, it looks like Lewy body disease is pretty much, you know, alpha-synuclein. And Alzheimer's is pretty much A, beta, and tau. But frontal temporal dementia is several diseases. So some of them have tau problem only, without amyloid. And these are tau deposits. Look a bit like tangles, but a little bit different. Some of them are what we call ubiquitinated inclusions, which consist of protein TDP43, that some of you may uh, be familiar with. So different, at least two diseases, two types of disease in the frontal temporal dementia. But overall, each degenerative disease of the brain seems to have its own molecules, and they seem to provide a clue as to, as to what's happening in the brain, both in terms of location and type of process. So there's A-beta, tau, TDP43, alpha-synuclein, which I told you about, and then prions, which have to do with creutzfeldt jakob disease, or mad cow disease. So with that, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about what we can say molecularly about why people get certain diseases and, and whether we can get any markers. One of the problems I mentioned is that we're not very good at telling these diseases apart from 6 million.